You need to be strong and you need to um, just persevere and keep yourself busy. Busy is good. It's a good thing. The busier you are, the less you have time to think about all the battles that you have. Because we all do have adversities. But the only way to overcome them... Hello, hello everyone, and this is your faithful friend Sandra Graves, and welcome to En Vivo Live San Antonio version. And this is bringing you stories in the local area of San Antonio um, to be able to encourage you, to be able to tell you what is going on here, who is living here in San Antonio, and what their life is all about. And I have the story. Um, her name is Christy, and her story is very compelling because it's a story of perseverance. And that's what you should have in mind this year, is to persevere. So if you have a story that you want to tell, and you want to share with us here in San Antonio, Texas, please send us an email to info at envivoassociate.com. Again, info at envivoassociate.com. And now I'm going to leave you so that you can listen to my interview with Christy. Tell us, who are you anyway? My name is Christy Pichota, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I've moved to Texas couple of years ago and um, I'm kind of on I consider it life 11 but at any rate um, life 11 what does that mean yeah well I've gone through various stages in my life uh, all different types and so it's numbered by times. 1 to 10 and 10 is the end exactly. so you are on 11 okay and and Texas is my 11th life my 10th life was when um, I ended up married, and my ninth life was when I ended up having an aneurysm, a ruptured aneurysm of the cerebral part of my brain. It's called a pica aneurysm, and it's a weak wall in a main artery. You can have them anywhere. You can have them in your abdomen. I happen to have one in the cerebral part of my brain, and it ruptured. I was trap shooting with my fiance and other people, and uh, I just wasn't feeling right. I started to get strange noises in my ears, people talking or annoying me, and I knew something radically wrong was going to happen. I didn't know what, I just knew something was not good. Uh, I unloaded my gun because I was trap shooting and trap shooting is when you're shooting at just clay pigeons. Mm -hmm. uh, I collapsed and I was rushed to the hospital. I do not remember just snippets of that. Uh, the rest of it was all secondhand information through my fiance and then later when I was out of the hospital after a month in intensive care eventually they knew it they gave me a test with dye and that indicated that there was a rupture mm -hmm. in the cerebral part of my brain. At this point is there any pain involved or at that point, um, there was no pain involved. There was just uh, little recollections of uh, little snippets here and there of fear. Um, and one of them being that they were going to helicopter me to another hospital because they did not have a neurosurgeon in that particular hospital where they rushed me. Right, right. So basically, it was just snippets. Then I remember feeling fear. I don't know what point I felt that, but I couldn't see anything but dark, just black. Mm -hmm. And I felt very afraid as to why I wasn't seeing anything, anybody. All I could see was black. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, whether my eyes were open, I was in a coma, whatever the yeah. situation was, I really don't know. Right. And then I remember thinking, my mom is deceased, my brother was deceased. I didn't think that, that's the facts. So 
I thought if I saw them smiling, that I, everything would be okay. So at this point, they are not alive no. in your life, but at this point when you are blacked out, right. you are thinking you only want to see them smile. Right. Wow. I wanted to see their smiling faces. Mm -hmm. uh, it and was I, my hope to see the smiling faces because I knew I wouldn't be afraid. Okay. It would take the fear from me. And did you get to see them? I never got to see them, but I felt the presence. I did hear my brother's voice, mm -hmm. and I felt the presence. And then this peace just what came over say? me. My brother said, this is your bro, and it's not your time to go. Wow. Because every time I talked to my brother on the phone, he would always say to me, this is your bro, what you know. <laughs> And that was just our standard conversation on the phone when he was living. So that was what he said to me. And this peace that came over me uh, is just not a peace that you would feel on this earth. Yeah. It's, it's a peace that's just unexplainable. Yeah. It's unattainable. It's unexplainable on earth. So what was happening to me at that particular moment, I don't know, other than this encounter that I wanted, yes. that actually happened. And um, from that point on, then uh, it was just, I went to a regular room, and then I was able to go home, which was to my mom's home, because I was not capable of taking care of myself. I couldn't see, I couldn't talk. My one, pa one vocal cord was paralyzed, but I had no voice. I had no sight. I couldn't walk. I had to learn everything all over again. It was just like, like a, a helpless child at that point. And um, then I went home and I thought, you know, everything was so, just so awful, you know, when when something like that ruptures in your head, and, um, you just lose everything, and you're such an independent person, um, and you feel this way every day, like you're falling out of the bed, you know, you can't walk, you can't swallow, you can't talk, even it's if you needed to call out to somebody. Those things that we take for granted. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if you needed to call somebody, like if you fell and you needed to call somebody, you don't even have the voice to call the person. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to think, you know, if I have to feel this way every day, I wish the Lord would have taken me. Mm -hmm. I just really don't want to live feeling this way yeah. every day. Yeah, and it's, and, it's, and it's great that you mentioned that because a lot of people will have those feelings but afraid of actually voicing it. But sometimes we do feel that we have these challenging moments that we do feel. It's not like you just want to kill yourself, but it's just like, okay, if this is the situation where I have to depend on right. people, then why should I be here? And like so many years later, you think, you know, at that time the doctor tells you whatever you're left with, you're going to be left with for at least a couple of years. Anything you're left with after a couple of years is what you're going to be left with for life. Wow. So when you hear that, you know, and you're in the shape that you're in, yes. that two years sounds like a lifetime if you're living the way you're living, right. not being able to do your everyday things like you used to do. And based on the so, doctor, you were not supposed to do a lot of things. No, and based on the papers that were signed, it was either, for me, at that time it was either death or a severe vegetative state wow. or horrendous neurological disorder. But so, how, how did you overcome all that? What happened? Well, 
I um, saw everybody else's life going on as it went on. Um, nothing seemed to skip a beat, but from the day that I collapsed, my life changed as I knew it forever. And I thought, well, I need to make a new me. Mm -hmm. If I can't get back to where I was, yes. if I can't get back to 100%, I'm gonna shoot for 60, yeah. I'm gonna shoot for 70, I'm gonna shoot for 75. As far as I can make it, that's where I'm gonna take myself. Even if I never make it to 100%, I will settle for wherever I can end up other than being right where I am at wow. that particular time. Well, I, I, I need to pause and just applaud you okay. I mean, for just that persevering attitude because that is when you know who the fighters are. It's not about falling. It's about getting up and you're showing that up. So may God continue to bless you. That is just a great attitude that I also want to have. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. And um, I, I know that you said that you wanted to share something. Um, well, can you do that? I would like to do that. So tell um, us, tell us, tell us what you wrote. Okay, I just wrote a little something, and um, I know this sounds. Uh, mm, it's easier said than done, but it can be done, and I want. I want the world to know that it can be done. Um, you just have to persevere. It's not how far or how hard we have to work at something to achieve our goal. It is the will. Always have the hope. And the will will always take you where you want to go. Basically, uh, my mother had to go back to work. I was raised by my grandmother, who at that time was in her mid-70s. And um, we were left, my brother and I, pretty well on our own. I was one, my brother was three, and my father passed. So we basically raised ourselves on the streets. We had to learn how to survive. We had to learn how to uh, come out to the best of our ability on the top and just be persistent at whatever it was we were doing. We had to watch each other's back and we had to take care of one another because my mother was working all day. So uh, through that I gained a very strong will. I became very tenacious, not to mention that I'm a Taurus which is also one of those traits, tenacity. And uh, you just decide that you're going to go ahead and you're gonna make your life the best that you can make it, whether it was the life you knew previously or whether it's only 80% of that life. You're gonna make some kind of life and a good life for yourself. You know, I heard that song, You Will Make It Through. Is that your song? And when is it that you came up with that? After my sickness, um, I started writing poetry because it was always very hard for me to 
relate verbally how I was feeling emotionally or inside or maybe I chose not to do that because of the way I was raised. So everyone's life went on around me and I saw them every day, nothing changed, nothing skipped a beat. My life as I knew it changed forever that day. So it was up to me because there was no one else to make a life for myself and a good life. So I started writing everything I felt that I couldn't speak because I had no voice at the time. And I started to write everything down. And from that time on, I wrote poetry. I copyrighted many, many But is poems. that something that you were doing before all of this or you just started writing from front? I never wrote a lick. Whoa. Never wrote a word in my life until after the aneurysm. Mm -hmm. That was my way of communicating and they would just flood my head and I would write them. And I just kept writing and now I have hundreds of them copyrighted. Wow. So now since I moved to Texas, uh, I've decided that I wanted, I was always into that type of field. I always loved music, I always loved dance, I always was in every play in school. And um, I've decided that I wanted to make my poetry into songs. So now I have a song, You Will Make It Through, and it all stems from what I've been through and to let people know that even though it's easier said than done, it can be done, and you will make it through. Could you give us one of the sentence of that song or a verse or something? What does this song say? <sighs> well, it, this doesn't say it in the song, but this kind of goes along with the okay, song. Okay, go ahead. Life is a battle of the mind and actions. If you can master both. You can create whatever reality you want for you. Wow. And this is the reality I want for me. This is going to be my next life. I'm going to record. I'm going to change my poetry into song. And I'm going to sing to the world and try to have people relate to what I'm saying because the song does end you will make it through we will make it through you have brought me through and that I kind of dedicate to my mom because all in all even though she's not here and hasn't been here for some time She made me the woman I am today. ¿Quién no se equivoca? Humans make mistakes. Porque recordemos que todos somos humanos. Some days it's easy for me to say, I don't want to do anything. I just want to hang out and not do anything. But me as a person, I am not able to do that. You have to get up every day. You have to make yourself do something. You have to have a plan, a goal, or even if it's just to go out and be good to yourself and buy yourself something. Anything but just staying in the house, on the computer, or talking on the phone, or watching television. You have to always try to work towards something, or do something. Because when you sit around, it doesn't make you feel any better. It doesn't help you get through 
whatever it is you're trying to get through. You need to be strong and you need to um, just persevere and keep yourself busy. Busy is good. It's a good thing. The busier you are, the less you have time to think about all the battles that you have. Because we all do have adversities. But the only way to overcome them is to keep working towards that, however long it takes. Just keep thinking positive, even though it's easier said than done a lot of times. It's easier just to say, oh, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. You know, I'm just going to stay in the bed. I'm not going to take a shower. I'm not going to wash my hair. And I'm just going to watch TV. <laughs> you just have to do it. And believe me, every time you do that, even if it's an effort and it force and you're forced to do it, because a lot of times I force myself to do things, but I force myself to do them, and every time I do it, I always feel better. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, I always feel better when I make myself do things. And I totally agree with you. God has been so good to me, and um, I totally relate to what you say, because sometimes it does get challenging and you just have to keep pushing. And I love that title, You Will Make It Through. I love it. I and that is such an amazing title that everybody just needs to remember, you will make it through. You will make it through. Even the most difficult days that you have, you just have to remember. You, you will make, make it, it through. through. And, and you will make it through and you will be helped. Mm -hmm. You will be helped to make it through by a loved one that's here, no longer here, God, or whatever you believe in. There's always somebody to help make you through, to help you through it. And I want to add a little something. And I know at times we all encounter adversity. And things may seem insurmountable, but if we persevere, we'll always make it. That's right. I believe that. I believe that, and I'm with you on that. And you know what? You will make it through. I hope that you enjoyed what you hear, and that you understand that this is not the end of your life. This is the beginning. It doesn't matter who you was, what matter is who you are and what you want to become. You need to make a decision of where you want to be. Stop making your past decide who you are. You are not your past. You are who you decide you want to be right now. This is something that I have to remember every day because when God gave me the strength to keep moving forward, I know, like Christy say, I am going to make it through. You will make it too. You and don't will. forget, Christy, um, she has songs. She's on Amazon? Amazon, iTunes. I have one. I have another one coming out. Uh, and she has a YouTube weeks. channel as well. So I am going to put the description in the bottom of this video. So get right here at the bottom of the bottom of this video. You are going to go to the description box and then click there and you are going to find the link to her YouTube channel. Please subscribe here and subscribe there so that you can learn more about um, Christy's journey. I also have a lot of poetry on allpoetry.com. It's under the name Crispy and Sweet. And remember, you will make it through. Don't forget, there's a fighter in you. Just keep fighting. Thank you, thank you for watching In Vivo Live, your number one bilingual personal development show. Because we are here to help you grow. If you wish to be a guest on our show, please send us an email to info at invivoassociates.com. If you wish to be a sponsor, please contact us. But keep in mind, 
that we only accept sponsors we believe in. Again, thank you for watching In Vivo Live.